Hello and welcome to this week's Stamping and Creating. Uh, my name is Fiona Witten and I am an independent stampinet, oh, stamping up demonstrator based in Wokingham in Berkshire here in the UK. Uh, I'm just going to chat for two seconds whilst I double check that this is actually going out live. I really hope it is. Um, so this week for Stamping and Creating, I'm going to share the um, Country Flowers Bundle. Um, this is one of the bundles that, that forms part of the Country Woods Suite. Um, and last week I shared, um, during our virtual card in the cover, the Country Birdhouse uh, Bundle, which is the other part of the... Uh, country Woods Suite. Um, so you can check back if you would like um, on last week's video and see um, what what we got up to at Card and the Cup and, and the card that I made during the virtual event. Uh, but as I said, this week I'm going to concentrate on the Country Flowers Bundle. And um, you'll find it on, well actually there's a few pages of the Country Woods Suite. It starts on page 48, and so 40, pages 48. 49 are simply um, some um, ideas for you to check out. So I'll show you, show you those. So these items here, so these um, images here, this one, this one, that one, and these teapots and that one um, are part of the um, country flowers. There's obviously the birdhouse is part of the country birdhouse. Um, and as part of the suite, there are also there's an embossing folder, some ribbon, some smoky slate and basic grey pearls, and also two sets of paper. So the paper we have, and I've got, I thought, oh, actually for once, I will go back to what I used to do, which is cut some up and put them into some uh, little plastic um, well, these are for like um, cigarette cards or uh, that you can you, that you used to be able to buy or um, I don't think you can stick Pokemon cards, but you, you kind of get get the gist. Um, so we've got the country lace paper and we've also got the country woods paper. Um, and I've also actually put on here uh, the item number and the page number and the cost together with the colours that the paper um, coordinates with it's one thing um, is lacking in the catalog is that is the fact that um, you can't see everything I mean I have to say here you can see but that's not necessarily both of these so pool party yes in here misty moonlight petal pink um, and peak and pie basic beige but there's no pecan pie here so I've actually gone through and um, taken off the uh, website the actual colours for each of the papers so the country lace um, looks like this so some general backgrounds on the back uh, country woods um, all like a wood type images so we've got different colours um, planks um, a pool party where the paint's coming off um, and various other things and on the back there's other colours as well so that's the paper that goes with it and I thought I'd also take some time just to simply go through quickly the bundle so the bundle you get the stamp set and the dies um, and by the bundle you save the 10% so it's £50.25 instead of the two individual prices which add up to £56 um, you will find that there are, I'll get this on here, um, one, two, three, four, five, six images that actually um, are cut out by the dies. And then these are other dies that cut out other parts. Um, so the teapot, uh, you can stamp, cut out, or you can just simply cut out. And then there is also a little plain, um, lid to go on the teapot so you can cut out one of those two um, so we've got a churn a um, teapot a stool um, 
that I think is just a, a sort of a bucket, a display bucket type thing. And then we have leaves. So this is all one die. These three are also on one die. And then this, this one and this one, there are two of each, but one of those. Um, and this, so we've got that. So that's really the dies. So you can see them, hopefully. I'll just lift it up and then hopefully you can see. So as I said, that's all one die, that's all one die, that is all one die. Um, and then one die cut, there's two dies that one cut and they're both cut out the same. So you've got a joint leaf and the two little leaves. And then this one, this, this one is two of them as well. So it's a larger flower and a smaller flower. So there's lots of things that you can do with this. And I thought I'd share some of the cards that I have made. You may have seen some of these posted on Facebook this week. Um, so I made this, this, this one went up on Monday from memory. Um, and I used the paper, so I actually stamped on paper for this card. So that was some of the country lace and this is the country wood. This background here is also country wood. And I use um, the wood um, embossing folder as well. You can see that just about make out the texture on there. Um, and I was, my, my original intention was to stamp this flower onto some of the paper and then colour it. But I couldn't actually find one way it didn't bring out the pattern so much in the in the actual images. So I decided actually I wasn't going to. So I just simply stamped on basic white and then coloured it with my blends and then die cut it out and then put it all together. So that was the first card that I made. And you can see that I did actually gut the middle of my card front to get this piece here. And I could um, put another piece of basic white here to hide that, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, there's nothing wrong with gutting your, your card stock and, and saving on it. So that was the first one. This was the one that I posted yesterday. So there's a little bit more to it. Um, so this is simply, I'll say simply, stamping and then colouring. But you'll notice that the images, um, you've got ones on top of the other. And what I actually did was a masking technique. So if I can find my stamp set. Here it is. Um, I did actually create three little masks. Um, and this is simply a post-it note. If you've got low-tack paper, anything like that, you can use that as well. So, from memory, I I stamped the, this pail first like so, I stamped that first, and then I put the mask over, and I also then worked out where I wanted to do the teapot, and just put, um, and, and stamped that, and then one, once I was happy with that, I masked that, and then, then I stamped the actual stool and by doing using that technique it ends up with it actually looks like the, the teapot sitting on the stool and the stool is slightly behind the actual um, churn um, colored them so this is pecan pie and copper I also used my um, pick it up because I can around. I hardly ever use this actually. The colour lifter. It's just so that I could give some sort of streaks and an effect that actually looked a bit more like wood rather than just plain colouring in. Um, that was Lost Lagoon and that was uh, Smoky Slate. And then we've got various greens, pink um, and I've got lots of Wink Stella on there. I don't know if you can actually see if I move it. I don't want to move it too much because then it might not sparkle 
or it'll probably all go out of focus. Anyway, so that was the card, stamp the best friend forever. I just stamped onto a strip and then made it into a little banner. And these are um, some of the pearls that carried over. And then on the inside, I just simply put a strip of the, the lace, the country lace paper. So that was my second card that I put up on Facebook yesterday. Um, you won't have seen this card on Facebook because it was one that I uh, made for the Craft Along With Us design team uh, tutorial. So this is the tutorial that went out with my newsletter on um, Saturday, or weekend just gone, I should say. Um, so it was written instructions of how to make this. And I even embossed the, um, the flap of the envelope, which I thought actually came out really nicely. I don't often think about embossing the um, backs of envelopes. And I should say that this embossing folder is huge. It's about the same size as your base plate um, for your stamping cut and emboss or your big shot or whatever it is that you use. Uh, obviously not a mini machine. It would not fit through a mini machine. Uh, and then um, I did actually last week stab lots of these images and um, had them just stuck in my um, box for the stamps. So I just took one of those and coloured it and then added it to the inside of the card. So that was that. So those are where those three come from. This is a fourth one and it's called a trifold, trifold angled card. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, they've been around for absolutely ages. Uh, I think I traced it back to like 2019 or something like that. But the problem is, is that I don't actually know who came up with the original card. But this was one that um, we used for the Acorns uh, Craft and Chat a couple of weeks ago. So I thought I would share that with you. And in fact, I'm going to show you how to make this this afternoon. So it's, as I said, it's a trifold angled card. This, this has a belly band on it, so which does slide off, she says. I just need to make take it off. So that comes off like that. So this is just a piece of the new basic beige. Um, that's a strip that's been t folded around. And then this is the base card. This is kind of what it looks like. So I've stamped on the inside and I've also, you, I used two different sorts of paper on this. Now you don't have to create a belly band, you can just create something that you can use as a catch for this. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, so this is what I'm, well, this is what I'm aiming at. Um, and then we'll see how we go when it comes to doing the catch or whether I do end up doing a belly band. So, without further ado, I will share with you how to make this. Now, I did actually draw out um, an excuse for my scraggly um, writing and everything. So, I drew out on a sheet of A4 the actual um, dimensions that we're going to start with. So. A4 sheet and we're going to cut it so that it's 15 centimeters by 26 and a half centimeters long so you get this piece and this piece here which are just a scrap and this bit here where all my writing is is kind of good for the for the belly band so right I'm going to put that up there so that I know what I'm doing she says that's it okay so we're going to start with as I said a sheet of A4 cardstock um, and I haven't quite decided what I'm going I've got some misty moonlight and pool party here. Uh, I think I'm going to use, whoops, a daisy, the wood, the country wood paper. So let's see, I'm going to go for misty moonlight only because it will then give a contrast to, against whatever I'm going to use. So as I said, we want to cut it so that it's 15 centimeters so you've got 15 centimeters on the short side so you get that nice long strip 
that's spare that you can then use to create your belly band. And then we're going to turn it and on the long side we're going to cut it at 26 and a half. Like so. This little piece really um, keep it but you're not likely to be using it. So we've now got, so it's 26 and a half by 15 tall and we're going to score it at eight centimetres. So remember when you're scoring, you want to use the lighter gray um, blade. That's your scoring blade. So make sure that you put the darker gray well out the way to ensure that you don't end up um, cutting by mistake. And then you're gonna move it along and you're gonna score it again at 18 and a half centimeters, like so. So you've got a piece that is 15 by 26 and a half, scored at eight and 18 and a half. Uh, so this is 10 and a half wide by 15. So effectively that's what creates your basic um, C6 card. Now you also need, oops, there's something about to go, a ruler and a pencil. And what you're going to do is you're going to mark on the right hand side four centimeters down from that right hand side corner. Um, now I'm going to actually turn this around so that I can actually do the marking. So I've got my ruler I'm just going to put the four set the four centimeter mark to that point and mark it on the paper. And then you want to do on the bottom right corner going across rather than down, you want to mark it at two centimetres. And then you're going to do exactly the same on the other end. So you're going to mark four centimetres down from that top left corner and you're going to mark two centimetres along from that bottom left corner. So there's four centimetres and two centimetres, like so. Now it's up to you how you then um, do this because basically we're going to make a cut from that top right score line to that four centimetres and then down from that four to the two. So you can draw lines and then use scissors or you can use your um, trimmer. It's really up to you how you feel, um, how comfortable you feel about it. I'm actually going to use my trimmer and let that do the work. And to do that, what you need to do is you need to line up this top part of that score line in the groove that goes top and bottom on your trimmer. And then you also want to line up that four centimeter mark. So I now have my, the score lines in the center here and my four centimeter line is this. And you're just literally going to cut off that corner like so. And then you're going to repeat and take this corner off. So again, you're going to line that up. So that was the four centimeter mark. So I'm lining that up. So that's the four centimeter from the top, to, from the top. And then this is the two centimeter along. Now, I don't like to start my cuts on the point because chances are you will um, just crush that point. So I will always move my my blade down out the way and start where there is a straight line. It just gives it a much neater cut. I'm not quite sure if that's still where it should be. It's pretty close. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna cut up. So that takes that piece off. 
Okay, and then you're going to do exactly the same on the other side. You're going to take from that from the left hand score line down to the four centimeter mark. And this is where it pays not to be using black. Obviously, the lighter color you have for your cardstock, you're more likely to be able to see your um, your mark better. Did I actually do that with a? Oops, I think I moved it. Take that off. And then similarly, I'm going to take off from that point down to that two centimeter mark. Move the blade down so that I'm kind to come from where it's straight edge, not a, um, point and go straight up so you now should have a piece of cardstock that looks like this I think it's a trapezoid I'm not really sure I'm, you know what so long since I did maths and stuff like that that I can't remember my shapes anyway so you're going to fold you're going to mountain fold both pieces into the to the front and it's really up to you whether you have the left on top or the right on top um, but what you do need to do before you go any further is remember to erase those pencil marks because you really don't want those showing Okay, so the card will be folded like that. And as I said, uh, it's really up to you as to whether you have the right going over or the left going over. Now you can, you can use more cardstock, a different color, or you can use paper. Um, it's really up to you as to how you want to decorate this. I will give you the instructions. So we have our base card, so we can put that to one side for the moment. We do need a piece of white, basic white, to go on the inside here. Uh, and that will measure uh, 10 centimetres wide by 14 and a half tall. This is centimetres, not inches. So that will simply fit in here, in, in there. And that's that and then you need to kind of figure out what paper you're going to use now I could use mm, I did say I was going to use this let's see what I've got here how does that look like that's a bit different it's on the other side There is also, if I can find it, the piece that has lots of colours on. So I could use that. That's, a bit, that's definitely a bit different. Okay, so you're going to need to cut two pieces, both of which measure seven and a half across by 14 and a half centimetres tall. So seven and a half across. Right, four, uh, 14 and a half, sorry, tall. So 14 and a half tall. I'm going to do the same again with this one. So I want it to be seven and a half across by 14 and a half tall like so so I've got my two pieces and this is where you have to be careful 
um, when you're putting putting them on if you turn it turn it upside down so if you have this here then that's the piece although it's on the left now when you actually have the card closed it will be on the right hand side and similarly if you have that there that will then be on the left hand side when you close the card so if you don't really care then it doesn't really matter I'm going to do them this way and then you want to repeat the, the exact same measurements that you used to cut the angles on the previous on the, on the actual base card so you're going to measure four centimeters down from that top right and two centimeters along the bottom from the bottom right And again, you're going to cut those pieces off. And then on the piece from the left, you're going to measure four centimetres down from the top left. And two centimetres along the bottom from the bottom left. And again, you're going to cut those pieces off. So let's do that now. So basically, I've got four centimetres down, two centimetres along, four centimetres down, two centimetres along. So in theory, and again, as I said, you can use your trimmer to do the work for you, or you can draw a line and use um, paper, um, paper scissors, not necessarily snips because you want a nice straight that piece and then I'm going to do two centimeters there to that point and again I'm going to use my cutting blade from the bottom on that straight edge rather than the point so that piece will fit on here And then the other piece, the... I know there's a mark on it somewhere. Right, so I've got my corner to that mark. That point to So that piece is going to fit on there. So you're literally just going to glue that onto there and you're going to glue the other side on as well. Remembering to remove the pencil marks first. I mean, you can erase them after you've glued it on, but I prefer to do it now. Whilst I remember Okay, so some glue. Let's see if I can actually find it. A glue. Oh, that's, got, that's got plenty of glue in it, which is good. So I'm just going to quickly adhere this. Yeah. Glue's better because then you can move things around and wiggle and It's going to look like that or like that. It's really, actually, I quite like it like that. And we have that piece of white to go in the middle. Um, and you can decorate this however you want. So you can stamp on it. You can put some paper. Let's see what have I got by way of paper. Do I want to? Let's see, look. 
could, because I've got quite a bit of paper, I could put a strip down the bottom. I think I'll do that. I only want like one and a half centimetres just to keep it simple. And it ties that in with the colours that are on the front. So I'm going to glue that on there. So I'm going to move it up slightly. You don't have to put it right down on the bottom. It's really up to you. everybody think of the new catalogue hope you like it I admit it takes a little bit of getting used to because it's somewhat different from ones that we've had in in the past um, if you get lost you can check out my video that I do a walkthrough explains where things are and and how to find your way around and what do you think of this new the starter kit for me I think that's an amazing offer of, of the um, in colour bundle. So you get all the ink pads for from the 24, 26 in colours. Pack of the markers, so you get all of the markers. Pack of the um, double six inch six by six double sided paper and cardstock for free, and then you still get to choose your hundred and thirty pounds worth of items um, and they ship to you for free as well I think that's, uh, that's such a good deal it's kind of crazy right there we go so that's that we're gonna go that way I think so 64 million dollar question now is how am I going to keep it closed so we have that piece that's left over from when we cut the base card. So we have this piece, but it's quite wide. And I don't necessarily want it that wide if I was to do this. So for those of you who want to do a belly band, I suggest you make it like three and a half centimetres long, uh, wide even. Let's see what I did on the other card. Where's my other card gone? There we go. That was the belly band for that. So I did that. So I did it four centimetres wide. So you could do four centimetres. So if you make that four centimetres, like so, and then all I actually did was I wrapped it around the card um, like this and you want you want to have it sort of vaguely loose um, that one I am going to put a score line in it just because it looks a little bit neater and then you want to overlap it so you probably don't need the whole of that um, length so I would cut it so that it was roughly let's see put it on there 24 centimeters long so 4 by 24 centimeters loosely wrap it round and then all you need to then do is to apply some adhesive to this edge here and that edge and then overlap them um, so don't leave leave some some give so that you can slide it up and down you don't want to have it so that you can't move the thing um, and then you can decorate this so this one I added a piece of uh, double-sided paper so this paper is uh, three and a half by 10. I want to say, yep, three and a half by 10. Decorate that and then you can then add whatever image, sentiment, whatever you want to. Or as I was saying, we could go nuts and actually 
um, make a catch here simply by stamping an image um, and layering, layering it on. Let's see now if we use, where's my stamp set? If we use the, the stool and the teapot and that, I think. So I admit I didn't do this earlier. Maybe I should have done, but hey, uh, teapot. Now we've got the teapot like that, the stool, and I think I'm going to just use these leaves. Oh, no, there we go. Now I could just simply stamp, as I said, on paper. I think I'm going to do it on white so that I've actually got some contrast. Uh, and I did have a piece of white left over from that. From the insert for the card. I did have. I know I had. There it is. There we go. So I'm going to use... Um, Tuxedo black to stamp those images. Um, which one do I put on here so that I knew where it was? Well, I put it in all my blocks, thinking in canned blocks, who can lose it? Well, you know me, my dimensionals, I can lose things very, very easily. So I'm going to stamp the teapot because these are photopolymer stamps. You want something underneath that has a bit of give. Um, so I've actually got one of these foam sheets that you can get across doors and they're not expensive. Or you can use your stamping pierce mat, anything like that. That and then the leaves. Got my three images. This is why I have to hope it works. And I just realised there's glue underneath this, which is why it's sticking a bit. But hey, right, let's put that out of the way. Let's move these out of the way because I'm not going to uh, clean them just yet. I will in a second. Ugh. You know what? Put that on top. Then it won't, won't stick. Right, I'm uh, going to have to colour these. So I have, I've got pecan pie. I have crumb cake. And I have the uh, copper clay. So let's start with the pecan pie. It's delight. Just do this quickly. Use the brush end because that tends to be the quickest. Do that. There's definitely something therapeutic about colouring. I'm going to add some of the darker as well, but not all over. Just what this is going to do. The feet, and then. just to make sure that it blends in. And I know what I'm going to end up doing. I'm actually going to end up using some colour lifter as well, just to give it sort of a streaky look, like you would get on, on wood. I'm going to use it like a colour because I don't want it to actually colour as such. 
so that will lighten that up. Teapot, right, what colour are we going to do the teapot? Hmm. Got some new in colours, we've got pink here. Uh, you know what, I'm going to go, I am going to go pink, but I'm actually going to use pretty in pink. So again, I'm going to simply colour this. Now there is a stamp in the um, stamp set, which looks like this. So you could add that to the image too. I'm just gonna quickly go over this with some of darker, just to highlight bits. over with the light again just to blend it all in sometimes you have to be a little bit careful because you don't really want the colors to run or anything like that that's that and then last but not least, the leaf. Um, I've got pool party. I've got some of the new ink colours as well. So I've got my little summer splash. Yeah, right, okay. So let's go. Oh, that's quite. And this is the light colour. Wow. Actually, no, it isn't. It's the dark. Silly me. Don't mind if we're going to end up with leaves that are slightly different colours. By the time you go over them, though, it's not going to be so bad. I actually like leaving a little bit of white occasionally. To do, I'm gonna do the the stalks because there are some stalks in there. And this is the shy shamrock, so it's slightly different green, as you can see from that. And let's go with pool party this time to get the dark. together. Like so. I can't pretend to be an artist. But as I said, I do like colouring. when I was a kid, don't know why. Okay, right, so that's my leaves, that's my stalk and that's my teapot. I think I will put that extra little bit on, on the stamp set. So let's do that quickly. Find a small block. And I guess you can put this in any which way you want to. I'm going to put it that way, I think. No, sorry if I got my head in the way. Like that. And then I'm going to use the dark, darker of the pretty and pink just to try and make that a bit darker. 
I'll go over it in a minute with some um, Winter Stella and stuff. So, right, so I've got three bits that need to be cut out. I could fussy cut them, but why fussy cut them when you've got dies? So let's get the dies. So I need the stool. I need the teapot. I'm not going to worry about the lid for the teapot because these are going to be going on the top of the teapot. Um, and I just realised I've got my mini machine, so I need to actually trim this down. I don't have full width. Okay, so one stamping cut and emboss machine. It's the usual, um, actually I'm going to put it on down here first and do it, sandwich. So I've got my plate one and I've got my clear plate on top, which is clear plate two, and then my paper and then my die. Line that up. Stick that on to hold it again. I've got my die. Just move around a bit so I can actually find out which way it goes. It goes that way. That's good. If I need to line it up. Hopefully that is it. Right, and then last but not least, another clear plate on top. And simply run it through. The usual cracking noise, so don't panic if you hear that. Let's move that out of the way. And hopefully all of this will then just pop out. One teapot, one stool. One little set of leaves. Let's move all the rest of it out of the way. Now, the one thing I did not do, which was very remiss of me, was to burnish all these these two score lines when they were folded. So I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to do it on both sides, the front and the back. I decided that I quite liked it like that. So I need to decide where I'm going to put the stool. I think it's going to go there with the teapot and the, the flowers. So what I need to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to fix this on. So I guess I am literally just going to... Um, You need to be careful so that you can actually open it. That's the thing. So although you want bits overlapping, you don't want the whole thing. And if you're fixing that down, but, but when you sort of open and close it, you will be bending it out of shape completely. So I'm going to put the stool there. Um, I just need to figure out if I'm going to put that on with dimensionals. I think I will, because that will make it easier for it to be opened and sh closed. Right. So, uh, I just 
need to make sure that where I'm putting it is uh, we're not out. So it's going to be there. I think I can go a bit more over actually. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the edge. I then put a piece here. Sorry, you probably can't see. So I'm actually putting it right close to that edge. realize that there is actually a piece here that is sticking out so I'm just going to use my paper snips to break it back underneath like that there we go as you can see now that that's holding that quite nicely and you can just simply well maybe it should have gone to the left a bit more this could go on top and then that's going to go on top again Or I could just do the teapot. This time I'm just going to put one there. And the glue on the bottom. Glue, glue. dimensional backing off. Like so. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this. So I'm going to put a dimensional under. Let's see. Probably that leaf there. And put some glue on the top of that bit here. And again, you need to remember to take the dimension backing off. So that's my card with the catch on. Now, probably a good idea to put a sentiment on, which you could put here. Um, Let's see how easy this is to open and shut. Oh, not too bad. People don't tend to close their cars anyway, do they? Once they've got them, they've opened them. So you just need to sort of put it, slide it back together like that. That's it. And then I'm going to put a sentiment on here. Uh, let's see if we've got. Uh, let's just do a small sending lot, I think. Some more white. It's actually, it's actually not that small because these are shown at 90%. I forgot about that. I should have pointed that out earlier. So that can go on here. it's photopolymer I'm not too worried about having to uh, cut card and stuff like that because I'm just literally going to fussy cut it I think close and how intricate you want to fussy cut around sentiments is up to you you can go all out 
or you can just do it so that on bits that are straight like this bit that says sending you can just go straight and don't need to do anything and then just do a little bit of more intricate cutting around the loopy bits ended up being points. Sorry, got to go quiet, concentrating. That'll be fine. Uh, this piece, I'm just going to tuck it in here. So I'm not too worried about um, so I'm going to put it up on some dimensionals, but other than that, um, it's just going to go on here. So it, it don't, you don't need to worry about it um, being part of the closing mechanism. And just going to cut a strip from the edge here, which will be easiest thing to do. So that's that. I was going to put some Wing Castella on, wasn't I? I'm not quite sure what bit on. I think I'll just do it on some of the leaves. And that little bit there. And then the last thing I need to do is some embellishments. What do I have? Oh, I've got those. I think these are iridescent foil gems. Put some of these on, I think. Hoping that they're still in the catalogue. So I'll just use my take your pick tool just to slide a few off. So there we go, that's it. That is my card for today using the Country Flowers bundle and the Country Wood paper, like so. And it's a trifold angled card or angled trifold card. Um, and to open it, you just simply do that so that when you've got, when it is open and you've got the that on one side and the message on the other okay well thank you for joining me um as i said uh what first said did i say today um joining off uh, new kits in the kits collection next week will be a card and a cuppa so i'll be at home grange at 10 o'clock next wednesday and live here on facebook at 4 30 so i hope you can join me one of those. Uh, in the meantime, have a good week. Take care. Bye.